Neptune has always stood at the far edge of our understanding, literally and figuratively. Cold, distant, and cloaked in sapphire clouds, it was a mystery we felt no urgency to solve. It orbited quietly at the solar system's rim, offering little drama compared to Mars, Saturn, or even its eccentric neighbor Uranus. But now, everything has changed. The James Webb Space Telescope, designed to pierce the fabric of space and time itself, has pulled back Neptune's veil. What it found is not just baffling, it is paradigm shifting. Because Neptune, this simple gas giant, does not behave like a planet anymore. It behaves like something else. If you're still watching, subscribe now. You crave more than answers. You seek what lies beyond. Subscribe now and be part of the few who never stop searching. At first, the anomalies were subtle. Slight deviations in its heat signature. Irregular fluctuations in the magnetic field. But as Webb's instruments continued to observe, the data piled into something far stranger. Neptune doesn't conform to Newtonian physics the way it should. Its gravitational influence does not match its mass. Its magnetic field doesn't just tilt. It wanders, fluctuating in shape and strength, sometimes in pulses that resemble biological rhythms, not random, not chaotic, structured. This isn't just a magnetic anomaly. This is a magnetic behavior, and it sits only the beginning. Deep within Neptune's core, Webb's thermal imaging revealed patches of unexpected heat, localized energy blooms erupting like slow, silent explosions. These aren't residual heat pockets left over from planetary formation. They're active. They pulse. They shift. They reappear. It's as if Neptune has an engine running inside it, one that doesn't make sense given its position at 30 times Earth's distance from the Sun, far too remote to absorb enough solar energy to explain these temperatures. Even more bizarre is how Neptune's great dark spot, the massive storm larger than Earth, that howls across its surface, has begun responding to solar wind patterns in ways never seen before. Not in passive absorption, but in adaptive, intentional behavior. The storm grows stronger when solar wind increases, but shifts location in relation to the sun's position, like it's tracking the solar output, like it's listening. That storm might not just be a storm. Some theorists have started to whisper a dangerous idea. The great dark spot may be more than meteorology. It may be a planetary scale sensor, or worse, it may be a mechanism. That alone would be enough to shock the world. But it gets deeper. The James Webb Telescope, observing Neptune's faint rings, detected a persistent stationary object embedded in their arc. That object did not move with the ring debris. It did not orbit in sync. It remained perfectly still, defying the orbital mechanics of surrounding material. At first, astronomers thought it might be an imaging error. Then it appeared again, and again. It is motionless in a system defined by motion. Some now speculate that the object is a cloaked satellite, possibly a probe, possibly a fragment of something more ancient, even perhaps something still active. But the truly disturbing theory that the object isn't separate from Neptune at all, that it is part of Neptune, a component, a node, a joint, because Webb also detected something else. Geometric patterns embedded in the planet's magnetic field, not fractals, not randomness, symmetry, patterns consistent with artificial resonance, the kind of harmonic alignment you'd expect to find in engineered systems, not planetary geology. These patterns aren't occurring once or twice. They repeat, they echo, like a signal from within the planet's own structure. This is not a gas giant acting strangely. This is a system performing. When researchers mapped the fluctuations in Neptune's field over time, they discovered something that left even the most grounded scientists speechless. The waveforms align with musical intervals, chords, harmonic frequencies, not noise, not drift, resonance. It sits as if the planet is singing. That is not poetic metaphor. It is literal. And if Neptune is singing, the next question is who or what is listening? Or worse, who built the song? Some of the most radical thinkers now propose that Neptune is not a planet in the traditional sense at all. They believe it may be a construct, either entirely artificial or a naturally formed world that has been modified by forces unknown. Its irregular gravitational field, which has always puzzled astronomers, 
may be the side effect of an internal structure too complex to detect with surface-level scans. What if Neptune houses something ancient? A machine? A node? A massive trans-dimensional system embedded within a planet-sized casing? What if Neptune isn't a place, but a process? And then comes the most disturbing detail of all. Gravitational lensing patterns observed during Webb's deepest scans of Neptune's surroundings revealed slight distortions, ripples in space-time that cannot be accounted for by the planet's mass alone. These distortions mimic the gravitational behavior of small black holes or exotic gravity engines, meaning there may be something inside Neptune that warps gravity itself. Not through mass, but through technology. These distortions align precisely with the location of Neptune's heat pulses. They are cyclical. They repeat. They modulate. The implication. Something inside Neptune may be manipulating space-time in controlled intervals. Not haphazardly. Not naturally. Deliberately. A gravity engine. A stabilizer. A cosmic anchor point. We don't know. But the implications are chilling. Because if Neptune contains even the remnants of such a mechanism, it means our solar system is not entirely natural. It means some part of it may have been designed. We always assumed the architecture of the cosmos was accidental. Gas. Dust. Gravity. But now that assumption is cracking, Neptune is cracking it. And with it, our understanding of what kind of system we live in. Because if Neptune has been engineered or even altered, it changes everything. It changes our place in the universe. It changes how we view planets. And most of all, it changes how we define life. Because Neptune behaves like a system. It reacts to inputs. It changes in response to cosmic energy. It generates heat and processes signals. Its storms adapt. Its magnetic field evolves. Its orbit displays the micro-adjustments of purpose. These aren't qualities of inert matter. They're qualities of response. Some researchers have begun using a controversial word to describe it. Sentience. Not consciousness in the biological sense. Not a mind. Not a will. But awareness. Feedback. Memory. Intention. It sits as if Neptune remembers something. As if it was built for something. And if that's true, then what does that make our solar system? A machine? A trap? A beacon? Or a vault? Is Neptune the guardian of something greater? A lock? Or perhaps even a door? The signals continue. The heat pulses haven't stopped. The magnetic rhythms repeat and the stationary object within the rings has not moved. Neptune watches. It waits. And now that Webb has seen it for what it is, or what it might be, we cannot unsee it. We cannot pretend this is just another gas giant. Neptune is not what we were told. It is something else entirely. Something older. Something hidden. Something awake. For centuries, Neptune was simply the eighth planet, a blue, distant, frozen giant spinning in the far reaches of our solar system. It was a mystery. Yes, but a passive one. A place of icy storms and gas layers, orbiting steadily beyond the visible eye. Then came Voyager 2, in 1989, offering the first and only close encounter, revealing that Neptune was dynamic, wild, unpredictable. Still, it remained in the category of planet, volatile, yes, but inert in the ways that mattered. Until now. What the James Webb Space Telescope has uncovered isn't a refinement of old knowledge. It's a confrontation, a cosmic reckoning. Because Neptune doesn't behave like a natural object anymore. Its behavior, its rhythms, its very nature suggests design, structure, control, and perhaps a purpose. The gravitational anomalies alone are enough to make hardened physicists question their foundations. Neptune's gravitational field doesn't align cleanly with its known mass. It's too strong in some regions, too weak in others, fluctuating in microbursts that appear timed rather than chaotic. These changes occur in tandem with thermal pulses, high energy bursts that erupt without warning deep in Neptune's atmosphere and radiate outward in perfect concentric rings. That symmetry cannot be a coincidence. It's a signature, a rhythm, a system, when astronomers modeled these pulses and their gravitational signatures, they found something staggering. 
They resembled artificial systems used in Earth-based particle accelerators, controlled oscillation, pacing, power cycling, not chaotic, not random, programmed. Then came the resonance patterns. Neptune's magnetic field is not just tilted, something long known. It is modulating, not over centuries, as once believed, but over days. Its direction, its intensity, its frequency, it all shifts in patterns that eerily align with harmonic frequencies, the kind found in tuned instruments, in engineered resonators, in systems designed to carry information. Imagine a violin string tuned by planetary forces. That sits what Neptune has become. The suggestion isn't that Neptune is alive in a biological sense, but that it acts alive. It exhibits systemic feedback, inputs and outputs. It takes in energy, whether from the solar wind or galactic radiation, and responds with pulses of heat, movement and magnetic discharge. It's behaving less like a world and more like a reactor or a transmitter. If that's the case, then what is Neptune transmitting? And to whom? That's the question no one wants to answer out loud, because it implies there's someone listening. Then there's the object embedded in the rings, the stationary anomaly. It has no tail, no orbit, no thermal activity. It sits like a sentinel, motionless, while the rings rotate around it. And yet, when scanned in the infrared spectrum, it reflects a narrow band of light, consistently, repeating every 14 hours and 17 minutes. That timing corresponds to one of Neptune's lesser-known internal resonance cycles, a fluctuation believed to be connected to deep pressure waves far below the surface. The object is syncing with Neptune's pulse, like a metronome keeping time with a heartbeat. But here sits where it gets stranger. The object emits nothing. It doesn't radiate heat. It doesn't reflect standard, visible light. It only reveals itself when Neptune's magnetic field contracts inward, briefly illuminating the object in scattered subatomic emissions. In those fleeting moments, the object appears geometric, polygonal, not smooth, like a natural asteroid or a chunk of ice. It has angles, planes, straight lines. Nature doesn't make perfect symmetry. Intelligence does. And if it's intelligent, then it's old, perhaps unimaginably so, perhaps placed there long before humanity walked the Earth, maybe before Earth itself solidified from molten chaos. The implications are endless. What if Neptune is a gate? A stabilizer in a system too large for our minds to grasp? What if our solar system is not a random construction of gravitational fate, but an engineered space, a set of nested conditions maintained by invisible architecture, with Neptune as a key node? Think of it like this. If the solar system were a machine, Neptune might be the capacitor, the balancer the ancient lens focusing unseen forces to maintain planetary harmony. If it failed, or if it were ever tampered with, what would happen? Would orbits destabilize? Would gravity collapse? Would the sun sips output shift? We don't know, because we've only just realized Neptune isn't just there, it's doing something. And maybe it always has. The heat coming from its depths isn't just unexplained, it's regulated. The pulses don't fluctuate wildly. They appear to rise and fall in response to external phenomena, solar radiation, galactic waves, even Jupiter's position in its orbit. It's as if Neptune is syncing with cosmic rhythms, adjusting itself in real time like a beacon tuning into frequencies far beyond our comprehension. And then the signals. Buried deep in the noise of Neptune's magnetosphere, researchers uncovered a low frequency pulse, not random, not static, a signal, one that cycles every 26.2 hours, long enough to evade most observation windows, long enough to be missed for decades, but consistent. It repeats a simple waveform, followed by a series of prime number intervals. Nature doesn't set, count. Nature doesn't set primes, but intelligence does. That signal might be from Neptune itself, or it might be something Neptune is carrying. The shape of its internal energy emissions, mapped by JWST's spectrometry systems, shows layered architecture. Three concentric energy zones that rise and fall like a capacitor charging and discharging. The pattern is staggered but synchronized, 
just like human-designed electrical systems. The deepest energy burst is so powerful, it subtly distorts local space-time, not enough to rip reality apart, but enough to bend light. That is not theoretical. Webb captured it. A tiny persistent lensing distortion surrounding Neptune's equator, a gravity field behaving like a rotating torus, not something a planet should do, something a device does. If Neptune is housing a gravity-altering structure inside it, whether natural or engineered, it might be the most powerful component in the solar system, not a planet, not a moon, a machine, and perhaps one still operating. Every question this raises leads to another even more terrifying. Because if Neptune is a machine, who built it, when, and why? Was it placed here for balance? For surveillance? Or as a part of some vast interstellar transportation system long since deactivated? Are we just now waking it up? Worse yet, have we already triggered it? We don't know. But this, we do understand. Neptune is not passive. Neptune is not inert. Neptune is not just a planet. An operation. A component. And possibly, a signal. A cosmic warning. Or an invitation. One we never knew we sent, until now. One we may never be able to take back. The truth is no longer hidden behind distance or data gaps. The James Webb Space Telescope has torn open the silence around Neptune and forced humanity to confront a reality it was never prepared for. Not only is Neptune behaving in a way that defies the expected laws of planetary motion and magnetism, it's doing so with a consistency and intelligence that makes it increasingly difficult to label as coincidence. The planet once dismissed as a quiet ice giant at the edge of the solar system is beginning to look less like a passive celestial body and more like a conscious or constructed mechanism embedded in our cosmic backyard. The complexity begins with Neptune's internal heat. For decades, planetary scientists have puzzled over the fact that Neptune emits more heat than it receives from the Sun. That would be strange for any object, let alone one thirty times farther from the Sun than Earth, where solar input is minimal. Yet Neptune glows with an internal warmth not fully explained by radioactive decay or leftover energy from its formation. Now, thanks to Webb's sensitivity, we know this heat isn't merely excess, it's pulsating. In regular intervals, from consistent latitudes, almost like a heartbeat. Not the erratic outgassing of a cooling core. Not the slow convective churning of deep ice, but structured, coherent emissions timed to an internal clock. This regularity alone would raise questions, but paired with Neptune's magnetic field, the implications grow more severe. Neptune's magnetic field isn't just misaligned, it's dynamic, unstable, but in a way that follows a shifting yet repeating logic. It doesn't behave like Earth's or Jupiter's, which wobble and drift slowly over centuries. Neptune's magnetic field flips polarity, alters strength and pulses in waves that almost seem to anticipate solar activity before it arrives. It is not reacting, it's synchronizing. These waves ripple across its field lines like data through a signal path, changing slightly in tone and rhythm in response to external influences. This kind of feedback isn't known in natural planetary magnetospheres, it's known in systems with feedback loops. Systems designed to respond, to correct, and possibly to interpret. The deeper Webb peers, the more it uncovers about the impossible architecture of Neptune's behavior. Buried in the electromagnetic emissions, astronomers found sequences that repeat with precision signals embedded in the magnetic flux. They don't match any known natural source, not plasma discharges, not auroras. They carry structure, nested repetition, rising and falling frequency ranges that suggest encoding. The signal itself, faint but undeniable, begins with a long low pulse, followed by a pause, then a series of smaller pulses in a pattern that mirrors prime number intervals, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, prime numbers. Widely regarded as potential markers of intelligence due to their mathematical uniqueness, aren't just appearing in the pattern, they're framing it. They're being used as timing structures. This is no random phenomenon. This is language, primitive perhaps, but deliberate. So the question remains, Louder now than ever, what is Neptune? Who? Or what? Put it there. And what happens when we finally understand what it's been trying to tell us? Because now that we've heard it, now that we've seen it, 
We can't go back. And Neptune is still pulsing.